As polling opened on Saturday for the second iteration of the First People's Assembly of Victoria, Bangarang woman and co-chair of the Assembly, Auntie Geraldine Atkinson, arrived to cast her ballot. Auntie Geraldine, who announced recently she would not be recontesting her seat, spoke briefly of the challenges faced by the Assembly over the years and her hopes for Assembly 2.0. I think the biggest challenge was being forging relationships with my fellow members was really a challenge um, because what we needed to do, we needed to ensure that they uh, were informed with the work that we, Marcus and I, as co-chairs, as negotiators were doing and what we needed to do was bring them along on those, those tr treaty negotiation journeys with us and to get their support. I, I really hope that um, the candidates that do get elected have the skills to be able to ensure that, uh, that the work that we established, the architecture, the elements for treaty, that uh, they follow those rules. We have um, the negotiation framework that just sets out those rules for negotiating treaty. Uh, there are minimum standards in those negotiations that have to be met and cannot be changed and that I would want them to follow exactly the framework. I would also want them to respect uh, the integrity of the treaty authority once it is established and to respect the self-determination fund. Former Victorian Treaty Advancement Commissioner Gunajamar woman Artie Jill Gallagher, who was instrumental in establishing the Assembly, also arrived and spoke positively of the work undertaken by the Assembly over the past several years. My honest opinion is the work that the First People's Assembly, the, the inaugural First People's Assembly, the mob that were elected, have done amazing work. To, to think that in such a short time that they were elected, they have set up the um, treaty negotiating framework, the Uruk Truth Commission, uh, the Self-Determination Fund, they've designed the Treaty Authority, that's a load of work and it's just outstanding. And so the next lot that are coming through, they're going to be elected over the next three weeks. Their job's now to implement what the uh, inaugural First Peoples Assembly achieved. Voting for the First Peoples Assembly of Victoria continues up until the 3rd of June and is open to all traditional owners of country in Victoria regardless of their place of residence, and to all Victorian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders who have lived in Victoria for at least three of the past five years. All voters must be 16 years and older, and the Assembly has set up a website at treatyelections.org with rules on eligibility, places of voting booths, online enrolling, and information on all candidates.